It may have taken an entire year, but we finally got it. No, not Lunar Near Your Neo Vision Awakened units, those still don't exist, but it's a new Esther! I have a lot of lapis from Xenogears and Final Fantasy IV, so I should be able to afford and choose a premium unit. Okay, bye guys, have fun! I guess I'll get her off banner in a few weeks. Gosh darn it, I can't even complain, I see every reason to make Esther a well worth premium. Popular unit, CG Lima Burst, True Brave Shift, but of course it's going to be the full kit that makes or breaks the banner. Now they do try to entice you, as they did lift the Neo Vision drop rate to 4%. Still, if they don't change the featured unit drop rate, this won't mean much. I don't know about you, but as a free to play, I'm only really interested in the featured unit, and if nothing changes, Esther is going to stay at a 1% drop rate. If anything, this means every Neo Vision crystal now has a 3 4th chance to not be Esther. Well, I don't even have enough lapis to go for the safety net, so unfortunately I don't think I'll have the chance in the first place. But because you obviously play the game differently, I'll take the time to analyze the banner. So let's consider all 20 stats, to get 20 tickets for safety net Esther. 5 laps on this 4 step banner will cost you 60,000 lapis, but you're also pulling 215 times, with at least 5 of those pulls showcasing a 5% drop rate for Esther. Now this also means you're up against a 95% chance of it being literally any other Neo Vision, but rather than looking at the odds you're up against, compare it to the odds you dance with normally. It's at these moments you question what sick monster will create a system like this. Now I know it looks bad like this, but keep in mind you're giving away your soul for summons. Even with a 1% chance drop rate, you're doing over 200 summons. With the power of math, we see you have a pretty decent chance of at least one of them being Esther if you go all the way. And with the 5% 5, 5 chances we see, well, not really as optimal, but that's because this equation is being looked at separately. Still, in the end, you do have a better chance at getting Esther than you did, say, Tifa or Sephiroth if you were there for those banners. The not Final Fantasy 7 units? I don't know. I didn't care enough to pay attention to their banners. But let's look at the sneak peek now. Storm Seeker Esther. Her base form is a physical damage dealer, while her brave shift adds on… physical tank? Now it's not unheard of, as the first Esther could actually tank. Of course, she was just a much better damage dealer, but it'll be interesting to see how they'll implement this this time around. Will it be effective like Divine Doggy Chow? Or will it focus more on damage like Noppy? Either way, she's got a true brave shift, so at the very least there's no limitations there. As a premium unit, Esther's vision card will only be available at EX plus 3, but we'll look at that later. First, her Trustmaster rewards. First is a Materia, boosts attack and defense by 60%, then gives a 25% killer buff against 4 different species. Now it sounds versatile, but I think it sacrifices a bit too many killer numbers to be super practical, kind of like Zenaida's Trustmaster reward, and I don't think the defense buff is going to change that. Maybe it might for Esther's second form, but I can't say I have high hopes. Her Super Trust Master reward looks fairly powerful, a two-handed greatsword that boosts limit burst damage by 75%, and when equipped to Esther gives her 500 flat attack. It doesn't look locked to any element either, but I do have to note the limit burst buff is outmatched by the thing from Rain and Fina. On to her abilities. We see a new feature, Rechargeable Magnus abilities. In Esther's case, her ability will get recharged by using her limit burst, so I believe her attacks will rotate between limit bursts and abilities, just like her original iteration. We also see Storm Guardian, which seems much more defensively oriented. It's on a 10 turn cooldown though, so it doesn't look like a consistent fallback. Now, Vision Card. For a premium unit, it's overall pretty good. The flat stats are standard, the stat buffs are reliant on the weapon, but the killer boss, 50% for 4 different species, that's pretty good. The last one is the limit burst damage buff for any unit from Final Fantasy Brave Exodus, which is a strong bonus as well. Alright, onto the exchange shop. No unit fragments, but premiums are special, apparently. Uh, the materials are definitely decent. True Hero and Moonshade Earring. Clash of Wills, Fragment of the Egg. Wow, you're decked out. Whoa, a story event! No way, lore on a global original unit? Hopefully Sylvie appears. EX buffs? Madame Adele and Faisalus. They're certainly appreciated, but it's really the ability awakenings that changes things. Unfortunately they cost crowns, which are pretty rare already, and given that their buffs only increase their own strength, it's not too appealing. We've also got a message from the operations team. Let's see. Xenogear's fragment sucks. Why? 
Unit balancing. Missing unit upgrades. Why? You guys love Clash of Wills. So we decided to keep doing Clash of Wills. It keeps distracting us from unit upgrades. Wait, so it's our fault? Missing Medi- <laughs> I actually forgot myself. She'll come in April. April? We expected her around Sage of Thunder Sakura. That was September. Fey Fragments Dumb. Yeah, we sent them a bit late, but now you can finally experience the full force of Fey. Wow. Your feedback helps, player appreciation tickets, what? Oh, they're giving out player appreciation tickets. The thing that's based off total login days. Let's see, I'm in the Uber Important Group, so that's 15 tickets, which translates to 150 summons. Each 10 summon has a 3% drop rate for Neo Vision units. That's much better than the last appreciation summon, which had a wonderful, wonderful 1% drop rate. Oh yeah, but who's in the pool? Okay, so it's units up to January 20th. Oh, that only locks out the current Final Fantasy IV banner. That's pretty fair. And lastly, login bonuses. Razzle Dazzle Rabbit and the Feathered Headdress. Wow, that would look great on Riser. Oh yeah, the popularity poll. Chizuru won, but for a whopping 15,825 votes. Unfortunately, my favorite, Veritas of the Frost got second, but 13,000 votes is still pretty respectable. Actually, it looks like the rankings didn't change at all from the interim result. Hayo, Zeno of the Beta Star, and Ayaka. But it's nice to see Veritas of the Frost exceed double their results. If anyone was interested in 6 through 20, here they are. All awesome characters. Cleome, Darkfina, Sonida, Eileen. That's a bit of a surprise. And Wilhelm. Congrats to Chizuru for her future Neovision form. I can't wait to see it a year after the surprise Neovision Lunera.